Valentine's Day is quickly approaching, which means holiday parties at work, at home, with friends and family, and even in the classroom. Today I'm going to walk you through how to make a winter dessert that fits this holiday theme perfectly. I'm also going to share a few book suggestions for the month of February. We are going to start off by spraying our pan with Pam. This gets it prepared for the incoming ingredients and keeps the dessert from sticking to the bottom. Next, we are going to take a package of graham crackers and crush them up. We do this by putting them in a Ziploc bag and using a rolling pin to smash up the crackers. Now that our graham crackers are all smashed, we move on to the stovetop portion of our recipe. We take a stick of butter and melt it in our pan. Once the butter is melted, we stir in 1 4th cup of powdered sugar. Now that we have that stirred together, we add our graham crackers. You do want to leave some graham crackers to put on top of the dessert because that adds a yummy crunch to your dessert. So make sure you keep that in mind while you're adding the crackers into your mix. Just as a side note, if your crumbs that we are creating are too crummy per se, then just add some more butter. We will be spreading some mixture on top of it later, so it will need to stick together. It's time to remove our mixture from the stove. Go ahead and pour it into your pan and then press it down. Although we use our hands in order to feel the consistency of the mixture, if you're going to do this for a party or an individual outside of your family, you can use a spatula for this as well. Take one large package of cream cheese and place it into the mixing pan. Go ahead and give it a little mix. Then add one cup of powdered sugar and one teaspoon of vanilla, and mix. Now it is time to add two packages of Cool Whip to the pan and continue mixing. Marshmallow time! We are adding one cup, and then guess what? Mix, mix, mix! Take your mixture and put part of it into the pan and spread it on top of your graham crackers. Then take one can of cherry pie filling and spread it into your pan. I actually do not like cherries, and yet this is one of my favorite desserts. It is now time to take the rest of our mixture and spread it on top of our cherry pie filling. Make sure you use a different spatula and be careful not to touch the spatula to the cherry pie filling so that you can keep the pretty colors to your dessert. You can always go through and do a little fancy fluffing or swirling on top of your dessert. Then remember those graham crackers that we kept out at the beginning? We sprinkle those on top for the final touch. You want to place your Cherry Delight into the fridge to cool off before serving. This will be a really big hit. My first book suggestion is the story of St. Valentine and it is written by the Voice of the Martyrs. It just starts off with a note from the author to parents and educators and this gives you a little bit of history about St. Valentine. Then when you get into the book itself, it has some very nice visuals and easy to read font. And this just keeps the reader and the listener engaged. I do like to use this book as a read aloud personally. 
Something to keep in mind is that this is a Christian oriented book since it is about St. Valentine. Since I have never encouraged dating within school, I find Valentine's Day a perfect time to talk about being a good friend, not bullying, and accepting others. The Adam Raccoon books are perfect to help support this idea. In this book, King Aaron is actually going to throw a big dinner. So he gives Adam some invitations to pass out. Adam's really excited about this, so he's going along and he's choosing people to pass them out to. Well, he's not gonna pass them out to Turtle because he's coughing and he doesn't wanna get sick. But he finds a big bear and he thinks a bear might be important. But the bear is too busy to come. Then he sees a whole bunch of little birds, but he doesn't want to invite them because he thinks they're going to be too noisy. Basically, he keeps going through here and he's choosing people he wants to invite and people he doesn't want to invite. Another example would be a peacock. The peacock's beautiful, so he wants to invite the peacock, but the peacock is very vain and just wants to spend all day looking at herself. He doesn't want to invite the skunk, obviously, because the skunk will smell. So what happens is that Adam goes through and picks and chooses who he wants to invite. And when we get to the dinner, can we guess? Nobody shows up to King Aaron's dinner. So Adam has to explain what happened. So then Adam goes out and he just shouts, everyone's welcome. And he takes King Aaron's um, carriage and he brings a whole bunch of people back. And they have a wonderful time. So he's accepting others. They have a great time. He learns to be a really good friend. This can open some wonderful conversations within the classroom. Then we have the very last page, which is remember the story. Now this is a Christian book set, but I cannot stress enough that it can be used in public school. However, you need to be aware that the last page is mainly directed towards parents or Christian schools because this is where they tie King Aaron to Jesus. I do love that they do this. I love that it is a Christian book set, but again, it can be used in public school as long as you just beforehand go through and choose which questions you do or do not want to use and then create a few of your own. This is the other Adam Raccoon that I think would work perfectly during this time. I've actually already done a review on that, so I'll link it up above and make sure you go check that out. I have two more book suggestions. They can be used as read-alouds or in small group time. Children always love these two series. The first one is a Jigsaw Joan mystery. It's the case of the secret Valentine. And then, of course, we have to add a Junie B. Jones here, and she gets a mushy, gushy Valentine. I hope you you guys enjoy this yummy winter dessert. We always have it every single Christmas and then throughout the rest of the winter. Also, let me know down in the comments below any other Valentine Day themed books you read with your children or in the classroom. Thank you so much for joining me today and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for notifications. Thank you so much for watching and remember to be proud of your work, productive in your day, and positively joyful. Thank <laughs> you.